If you with Kanye, nah, you, you are a member of the Legion of so Lane. Just sit down in an interview and say, we all were energized over the, the elimination, elimination of Drake. Drake. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. an OG veteran Drake hater, yeah, yeah. but not the way Kanye. Like, I don't want to see Future with them. I don't want to see Metro with them. Kendrick, I don't want to see you involved with that. Drake, you won, buddy. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, back for another week of Brilliant Idiotness, man. Um, this week, the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival happens this Saturday, April 27th, in Atlanta, Georgia, yes, at Pullman Yards. Sir. Thank you to everybody who's been buying tickets. VIP is already sold out. Um, we still got some general admission tickets left. Wallow and Gilly going to be on that stage. Horrible Decisions, Mandy and Weezy going to be on that stage. The Poor Minds Podcast, Dre and Lex going to be on that stage. Jess Hilarious going to be on that stage doing Carefully Reckless. Debbie Brown will be there doing Deeply Well. Will Lucas with the Black Tech Green Money Podcast and the Baller Alert Show with a special guest. They'll be there as well. So go get your tickets right now at bentbright.com or blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Hezzy! Yes, sir! How your week was, man? Yo, um, I'm feeling good. I just want to say... Talk to me. Before Taylor even brings it up. Oh, God. Because there might be some truth to this. I don't know if they like Taylor coming in so early in the pod. Okay, well, she let's let's not let her react at all. Okay. But we can just discuss. Act like she's not here. Like she's not, we're favorite just thing completely to do. ignore her. Favorite thing to do. Yeah. I don't even think favorite Taylor showed to up today, I, honestly. I, I love it. I love it. You know, you know I, when I say I love acting like she doesn't exist, I love it. I hear you, bro. You no, know, when they say, you don't see black women. Yeah, yeah. Not true, That's but not I don't true. see Taylor. Because, yeah, Taylor's, she's not, she's not, you know. She's not, boy, hey, you're not white, you're not black, you're gray. Wait, wait, so, where I'm ready to I'm ready to start a conversation. Let's go. No, 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 no. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I don't like you smiling like this. I hate when you're happy. No, I'm really excited. Come on, let's do something. Why are you smiling? No, go ahead. You love, <laughs> you love the gray areas of life, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic callback. To now something watch. that wasn't now even on the It wasn't even on the pod, but you so got to tell everybody. What were I'm we talking say, about? I wasn't no, talking no, about no. what you think I'm, I'm just talking saying about. I'm I'm actually very black and white. I'm not gray. Okay, so you, so you, so you, so you, you have cracker. Yeah, you. Okay, you cracker. White girl. Cracker. White girl. White girl. White girl. White girl. White girl. Anyway, what, what was you about to say? Um, Before you were so rudely interrupted. I was rudely <laughs> interrupted by a white woman, fucking whites all over the place, just <laughs> yapping. Uh, I, there might be some truth to the fact that you know Drake may have named his song after Taylor. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Look, yes. it's a win's a win. A win's a win. I don't even care. A, win? a win's a win. How Taylor it? made it. Productions, y'all. So if it's a win. It. So it's a win if Drake named his song after you. Mm-hmm. Do you realize how hard you was hating on Drake last week? <laughs> it doesn't matter. A win's a win. You see what I'm saying? There's you're not gonna, no. You're not gonna, you're not That's gonna, why you should not care about any opinion <laughs> anybody has of you. Because it, they will flip so fast. Flip so you fast. The same motherfucker making a video about you online shitting on you will ask for a picture when he sees you. <laughs> yeah, I, fucking team. I never said I didn't like Drake. I just said you like, actually oh, did. Wow. You what? absolutely oh, did say wow. that. What? Are you you really hundred percent said, said that. On this right now? I said that when it comes to Hendrick. Yeah, like I'm not fucking with him, but overall, you know. <laughs> yo, this is crazy, yo. bro. Yo. God damn, yo, Taylor made this it. Is, this Taylor is Taylor made world it we live in, exactly. Right? That is it. This is, is the world we live that's in. That's why you cannot care. Do not care yo, about the opinions of people, me, bro, like at all. I wasn't excited. <laughs> I wasn't excited until I had a combo with somebody, and then I was like, "Oh, no way." <laughs> Do you do know Taylor Swift dropped nope, an album? No, it's not about her. You do realize nope. Taylor Swift dropped nope. on the same day Doesn't that matter. Drake made uh, put this song a Taylor made, and at the end of it, he talks about Taylor Swift for forty five seconds. But guess what? Taylor Swift don't say Taylor made though. Mm. I do. It's my production. Mm. So. <laughs> what you got for that one, Sean? <laughs> I do. It's my production. Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Who am I to get in the way of a good Delulu lemon? Okay? That's what I call people like Taylor. Delulu lemon. Delulu lemon. Little Delulu lemon. I'm not knocking any of them. God bless all the Delulu You lemons. really are the Caitlin Clark of talking shit. <laughs> I don't know what that means. That means you're the greatest <laughs> white girl ever to do it. <laughs> Whatever. They said they said the the word is that the Bernays once again predicted um 
predicted the future. I gotta give you that one, you know Charlotte. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it was again. spot on. I was crazy. Bro. So, so say exactly what the prediction was. I mean, we well, can I actually that, insert it. I said Drake should drop another record. Yep. Right? Just because we saw him do this before with back to back. He did charge up on a Saturday. He dropped back to back on a, a, a Wednesday. I thought he should have came back, dropped again on a Wednesday, right? Waited four days, where die that. But instead, he decided to drop on Friday. Either way, still worked. Yeah. Right? And then I said uh, in the pod last week, if I was Drake, I'd be putting AI all over the place. I'd be putting AI all over the place and I'd be putting AI out saying um, just, just, just basically what he did with the record. Like uh, uh, forcing people. What did I? I don't even, I, to be honest with you, I don't even remember what the fuck I said. Mm. I just know it was right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. But he did. He put out a great record, um, and it was a record that wouldn't even be born if Kendrick would have just simply responded. Mm. But now I don't want Kendrick to respond. That's no not Ooh. true. Wait. Why not? I don't want Kendrick to respond. Why? I don't want Kendrick to respond because Kanye West has made the shit corny now. Yo, I, this is the first time I've seen Kanye try to jump on a trend. Like, usually what? Kanye sets a trend. No, no, you did it before. Let me get my point out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was the first of the new school. He was. No, you're right, you're right, you're right. I mean, it's an you're old right, one. Right, it's right, an old for right. sure. Old people goodie. He bought it back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, like, usually usually he's setting a trend. He'll wearing, he's wearing the stupid uh, sneakers, the stupid yeah. pants, or, like, doing something, even the music, whatever. He's the guy doing the thing that's different, and everybody goes, yo, this is so different, and he does the different thing for attention, he gets all the attention for it. This, to me, like, screamed of, nobody's talking about me. Nobody's talking about me. How can I get people to talk about me? And then he's, like, latching on to the side, like those little fish that hang out near a shark, and they just get the scraps. Oh, my God. And it was, I've, I've never seen in Kanye's whole career... <laughs> Him do something like that. I, I was, like, blown away. Yeah, it is so lame because... And that's why I don't even want Kendrick to be involved no more because, like, if you go back and you listen to Kendrick's verse on Like That, he talks... He says something like, these niggas clicking up. So he talks about people like Cole and Drake clicking up, whatever, whatever. It's like, so I don't want you to be a part of that. Like, Metro, Future, all of y'all just need to tap out because when you, when, you when you bring the LOL into it, the leader of the lames... <laughs> right? He's the leader of the Legion of Lanes. Like the, the, whatever, whatever organization. If you with Kanye, nah, you, you are a member of the Legion of so Lanes, yeah. right? And so it's like I don't want to see Future with them. I don't want to see Metro with them. Kendrick, I don't want to see you involved with that. It's like Drake, you won, buddy. Go do your thing. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want. Kendrick involved in that. I don't want any of them involved in that. that is Kanye funny. came through and just made this whole shit whack and corny because he really. I, I don't know. I don't know if these other guys nah, really have nah, issues with Drake, but Kanye is a hater. No, nah, but yeah, like yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. an OG veteran Drake hater. Yeah, yeah. But not the way Kanye <laughs> yeah, hates him. Yeah, yeah. Right? I don't really even hate Drake for real. Yeah. He the, the, the sit down in an interview and say. We all were energized over the elimination of Drake. Our what? The, what the fuck was the what was it? What was the shit he said? Did you see it? I see it. Oh, you got to pull it up, Taylor. You should have it already ready. I didn't know you was gonna go to him. Huh? I didn't know you was gonna go. I didn't know we was gonna go right into it either. We but, never you know, know anything. You never know. I mean, we we warmed up before the. We usually warm up when the mics turn on, but we warmed up before the mics turned yeah, on. Yeah, we were cooking. We were talking about crotch. Yeah, we were talking about something. We was talking about something very warm. We were talking about... <laughs> we, um, <laughs> you know, that is probably why we're so loose yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> the thought of it just makes people feel great. I mean, facts, though. <laughs> yeah. That's where life comes from. Did you find it, Taylor? <laughs> the jaws of life. Ooh. Hung, hung, hung. I can't wait till my brother and dad meet y'all. What? What? Why are you, what are you even acting like we're talking about you or anything related to you? No doubt. Do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, did you find it? Yeah. Let's yeah. hear it. This is Kanye West. What podcast is he on? He's on uh, uh, Justin LeBoy's podcast. Yeah, Justin LeBoy started a podcast called The Download. <laughs> it's called The Download. What did you say? I know it's called the down low. <laughs> Everybody needs a Justin LeBoy in their life, man. Oh. Hype me up, man. Hype me up, King. Uh, call me. I went to the studio. Even when I'm full of shit. And then we, uh, you know, went through the, you know, the creative process, adding the chords and called the hooligans, called them out in London to get on a joint. And, you know, everybody was very, very excited about the elimination of Drake. Yo. <laughs> We what level of that excited we was energized.
How did this even come up? What what level of hate is this? Who sits around with a group of people and says, we are very energized about the elimination of another man? Like, you hate this person this much that you're sitting around thinking of ways to eliminate them? And how weak are you that you have to get with a collective of people Mm -hmm. in order to attempt to do it? Facts. Go out there and do what you're waiting for. And and, and you know what? You should be very disappointed when this comes out of Kanye West's mouth. Kanye West literally... Also, not very Christian of him. Not yeah, very Christian at all. Yeah, what was the word choice? Elimination. elimination? Yeah, that's not Christ-like Drake like is at all. Jewish. Ooh. <laughs> I'm just saying. There's levels Ooh. to that. I like what you're doing, Alex, but I don't. <laughs> I like what you're doing, but I don't. All right. I've been at Columbia over the weekend. <laughs> <laughs> They're protesting Columbia University, Alex. But, listen, up some steps. Do, do we understand... Do we understand the level Kanye West could be at if it wasn't for himself? <laughs> well, he went there. There's no question how far he's gone. He's, uh, you know, the most. What, he was by far the most influential rapper, and you can't take away from what he was. You can't. But the fact that he has taken himself out of that position of power because he's a dickhead. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And by the way, I know people are looking at this this video and they're like, damn, Kanye hating on Drake, man. You know, it might be hard times for Kanye. Kanye was hating on Drake when Kanye was up. Mm. I was I, I I talked about it on Breakfast Club. When we did our interview back in whatever year that was, when we was walking through the hills in Calabasas, Kanye West had a whole part of the conversation where he literally talked about Drake and Virgil, God bless the dead, taking the culture from him. He was exactly right. I thought Drake was going to be the one to take the culture from me, but it ended up being Virgil. Mm. And I just thought, I'm like, and I said, I'm like, don't those your guys, that's not your guys? Mm. But it's a, little, it's, a, it's a level of jealousy. Narcissism. And envy that he possesses, that even when he's up, People either, he can't stand yeah. to see nobody else win it. People are either for you or against you. Uh, people who have that level of narcissism. So they're either serving you or they're trying to take away from you. And it's, uh, yeah, it's a really unhealthy thing. It can lead you to great successes. You see a lot of people that have, you know, had incredible success in their life have similar traits and characteristics when they view life as a binary mm-hmm. in that way. Mm-hmm. And all the people, like when Virgil was serving him, he was the greatest ever, right? And the yeah. second Virgil goes out and does his own thing, fuck that guy is trying to take the yes. culture from me. Yeah, it's a... And, and, and by the way, this is another sad. reason you don't want to follow uh, the leader of the Legion of Lames, Kanye West. He don't like none of y'all. Well, he likes you as long as you serve him. He, he as long as yeah, you. Right tool. now, y'all, y'all have a, y'all have a purpose, right? Yeah. Your purpose is the elimination of Drake, whatever the fuck that yeah. means. Yeah. He, I guarantee you, he talks shit about all of y'all at some point in time. Yeah, I guarantee. If you've been around Kanye West, if you hung out with him, if you've been in the studio with him, you've heard him talk shit about everybody, everybody. Beware. Michael B. Jordan's Michael B. Jordan workout plans and Beyonce Coachella performances are not going to save the black community. You've heard him he say these that? things. Yes, <laughs> you've heard him say these things. He yeah. is a textbook hater. Yeah. He's just a hater. Why are we even giving him attention right now? I don't know, man. I just really wanted to say all of that to say, you can't trust a man with titties. <laughs> <laughs> Men with titties have a level of insecurity that we cannot even fathom. When they take off the shirts, you know what I'm saying, and little kids come running because they think it's dinner time, <laughs> you better believe that motherfucker has a level of insecurity and jealousy and envy that you can't even imagine. That's Stay facts. far away from men with titties. Yeah, that's a fucking genius. He's actually brilliant when you think about it because he keeps way bigger titties next to him at all times. <laughs> wow. So that you never look at his wow. titties. Wow. That's, now you got to give credit wow. where credit is due. Because when wow. you see him next to his wow. wife, all of us are looking at his wife. Wow. Because the knock-knocks are crazy. Yeah, when you so think about you it. you almost don't even notice Kanye. Amber, Kim, Stacks. new wife. Yes. But meanwhile, Kanye got bigger titties and hips than both of them. It might be true. You don't notice until you watch like a podcast. You're like, yo, yo. And then he got to say such crazy shit. You forget about it. Yes. You start talking about Hitler. You're like, titty, wait, Hitler? Like, it confuses you. That's really his mission in life is to confuse you from the fact. He combines hips and tits by saying hit.
<laughs> you know? That's really what, what he's doing. That's what he's doing. Bro, he, it's crazy. Yes. You look back yes. at everything. Yes. He's either talking about Hitch or Hitler. That's fact. One of the two. Because we will look at them cities if that. Wow. wow. Yeah, man. Kanye's wow. the lame. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Yeah, what else? Tell, tell us the memes of the week. You're a superstar now. You got a Drake song named after you. <laughs> Allegedly. I don't think it was about her. It definitely was. Um, well, here's a question Do you think he listened to the podcast? Yeah. Why do you think that? Taylor made productions. He, knows <laughs> he didn't say that. Who I am. How did he spell it? Taylor, my name, T A Y L O R. How does Taylor Swift spell hers? T A Y L O R? Did, is that how you just spell your name? T A Y L O R. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, you know Taylor Swift is selling two million records in a week. Yeah, she's the GOAT. She's Michael fucking Jackson. Well, she was and giving bow heat. down. Say again? People were giving her backlash. Why? Because of those lyrics she had about like wanting to go back. Yo, yo, just stop the hate. You can't hate. It's an avalanche. <laughs> That's what people were saying. Just get the fuck out the way. Two million records two million in a week. Records. One point four million in a day. I'm not taking that way. I'm just saying yo, she's getting back. Like, greatest artist of all time. She's not. Nice. She is Michael Jackson. She's oh. bigger than Michael Jackson ever was. Can I tell you? No, that's I try ridiculous. To watch, she is. No, she's more people on the planet now. Disney more thing. people have access to music. She's objectively bigger than Michael Jackson. She still sold. A, uh, Michael still sold a hundred plus million records with you. People had CDs. But that's what I'm saying. The fact you had to go out there and buy CDs. We would have done impressive. the same thing. For Taylor? No. Yeah. I, listen, I don't know. I'm not, she's not bigger. I, I haven't seen anything bigger than Michael. And yeah, but one, two million in a week is insane. And Think I just want to tell the Beehive and I want to tell Taylor and everybody that loves Beyonce because I love Beyonce Talk too. Talk that shit. I'm a Pinkett Smith Winfrey Nose Carter. We continue to let B down. Why y'all do that, man? Y'all knew Taylor had an album coming out in April. Y'all mm. knew that. Mm. Y'all knew. No, Beyonce, we don't pay attention to her. Y'all know Beyonce had an album come out a few weeks ago in March or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Beyonce sold like, I think, what, 300 plus thousand copies of Cowboy I Carter? I thought it was 400. I thought it was 400. Maybe 400,000 copies of Cowboy Carter. Then a, a month later, you let Taylor come out and sell two million in a week. Where y'all at? Where y'all at with y'all support? Yup. We're washing our hair with her sacred. Oh, so y'all don't care about the uh, music no more? You no, want to watch do. it? We do. I'm just saying we're. It's Did a you buy the album? Yeah, I have it. You bought it. She's such a liar. That's Apple Music. Just lied for no reason. You screamed it. You, you didn't buy it. it. You didn't buy it. Difference. It's a difference. It's a difference. Buy it. You didn't buy her hair product either. You're a liar. Well, I don't need to buy her hair product. But she just lied and said it's we're all crazy. washing our hair with her hair it's product. It's really crazy. It's just so crazy the lies that just roll off your tongue. Don't <laughs> trust Taylor ever. Okay. <laughs> Once again, titties. Okay. <laughs> Don't. Yo. What? <laughs> Once again. Titties. Once fucking again, yo. Titties. <laughs> Listen. Titties. Did you watch the Ryan Garcia fight? <laughs> Bro, that was crazy. Did you give Ryan a shot in hell? I thought he was trolling the whole time. Okay. I'll give I'll give him that. I, I was thought like, I, I thought he was towards the end. Yeah, I thought he was troll. I thought he was trolling. Um but no, I didn't think he was gonna do it. And it was the only reason I thought that he wasn't capable of doing it is because I thought Gervonta had a pretty easy time with him, one. And I thought Devin Haney, regardless of people didn't like the decision, fought Lomachenko to a close fight. Yeah. And Lomachenko is pound for pound. Yeah, yeah. So I'm yeah, like, yeah. if he's that proficient a boxer, there's no way. But I think Garcia, because they fought six times when they were amateurs. Six times. I think Garcia knew. I think he knew going into it. He's like, I, I kind of got this guy's number. We went three and three, but like I can hurt him. And without the headgear and shit and the smaller gloves, if I touch him, I'm hurting him. Yeah, I felt like Devin was going to win by decision. You know, even though I do, I like Ryan and Devin, but I thought Devin was going to win by decision. I didn't see this shit. I didn't see Devin. I didn't know that, that Devin doesn't have any power at 140. Oh, I knew that. Oh, no, I knew that. Really? I, oh, yeah, yeah, I knew that. I knew, I knew he, he has no knockout power whatsoever. I definitely I mean, knew that. But I, I like his I, li I like his defense, but it's just like... Nah, his defense wasn't there. Nah, it was not there Saturday at all. Like, not even a little bit. But see, the thing about Ryan that's always so tricky is Ryan has speed and Ryan has power. power. It's rare. It's very rare. And I think we don't realize how much power he got because he's so pretty. Yep. Straight it's up. like Oscar, yo. Straight Oscar up. was the same. He was a pretty little motherfucker back in the day, but he could crack and he would he would get busy. Listen, this fight just reminded me why I love boxing, yo. Yep. Mm. Like, this, like this, this Saturday night was exactly why I love boxing. You turn the pay-per-view on, yeah. you're watching, and you just get the most unpredictable shit ever. Unbelievable. You never thought that that was going to fucking happen. Also, I thought that ref was going to bail out Devin because there was a round where, Dev, where Ryan should have got two more knockdowns minimum 
but he kept waving them off. Yeah, he stopped the fight. They should have. They should have stopped the fight. It was crazy. This, I love this part. Oh, he's all oh, was crazy. <laughs> he's all, oh, nah, nah, he managed that crazy. shit brilliantly. He, 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 he said he was one sixty on fight night. Yeah, he did it right. But Devin Haney does the same thing. Devin yeah, Haney is a weight bully, so Devin Haney was probably one sixty as well. I loved it, man. Oh, like, it was amazing. I, 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 I loved it. Ryan is. Is he the face of boxing now? Yeah. Easily. It's not even close, right? He's by far the most entertaining character in boxing. It's not yeah. even close. Like, the guy lit the internet on fire. Yeah. I it, mean, there's very few fighters in any discipline that could do what he did. Yeah. If you're going to be ridiculous like that, though, this is the follow-through. You need mm. to follow. You yeah. got to fucking win. You can't just be a fucking ridiculous fool and not win. You got to go out there and win. Uh, yeah. I don't think that... I actually think Ryan could beat anybody in the division if he's focused. Who do we got? Lopez. Um, oh, that's right. Shakur still out Bud there. Bud went up, so he don't got to deal with Bud. Uh, Lopez, Shakur. Um, I, for me, it's Lopez, Shakur, and then Tank again. Uh, yeah, I think Tank. But Tank was, what, 135 with a rehydration clause. So Tank got to come up to 140 yeah, for them 140. to even have that fight. 140, 145. Tank said he can't, I mean, Ryan said he can't get down. To, I think Ryan said he might go to 147. Or am I tripping? I mean, that's what's next. He got to. Should Can I ask to, a uh, technical question on the fight? Yeah. Why did Gar? It seemed like watching it that he kept turning and kind of like offering stupid ass show his, like He's taking advantage of a boxing rule. Okay. So there is a rule in boxing that says you cannot uh, punch someone in the back of the head and you can't, I don't even think, punch someone in the back, really. So what he was doing is he was kind of almost like bending over and showing it's his the, it back. Was, he was trying to do the shoulder yeah. roll. But it wasn't even a it shoulder sucks. roll. Yeah, because he can't counter off of it. Like if you look at, at Floyd, Floyd can counter off of yes. his little Philly shell shoulder roll. Like he shoots that straight right out. But what Ryan was doing was going into full defensive posture and the rules of boxing kind of protect him. Because he's just going like this. Or so you can't just bang on the back of his head. But right here, though, that's that's, Devin was eating this up. That's what I was Devin seeing. was eating yeah. this up. But we talk, when Ryan came to the breakfast club, we talked about this. His last fight, yeah. shoulder roll was way worse. Yeah. This motherfucker was spinning around. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. he was like breakdancing. And yeah. I'm like, why the fuck do you keep doing this dumb shit? That's yeah. why his manager, his trainer, James, was like... Uh, we got to work on it. He was like, yo, stop doing that. He said it during the fight. Yeah. He was like, yo, stop doing it. What's his training name? No. Was it... Derek? Derek. I'm sorry. Derek Derek James. James. Derek James? Yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, he was doing a couple of amazing things in the fight. Like, we were just going to get technical. Like, hooking off the jab. So, like, he has this great hook. So, when you're fighting, like, an orthodox fighter, right? Like, a guy who's left hand first. Mm -hmm. The way that you block a jab is you parry it with your right hand. Okay? So, what it does is when you throw a jab, your defender moves his right hand in front of his face. Mm -hmm. So, what did he constantly drop Haney with? Jab, yep. hook. Left hook. So, he jabs. That drops Haney's hand a little bit. Haney doesn't get it back quick enough. And then that hook comes in and he kept checking him. So, now, there it is. Now, Haney's terrified of the hook because he's already been rocked with it. So, now, when Devin throws the jab, all Haney's thinking about is hook, straight right. Right. Mm. down the pipe. And now Haney's frozen. He doesn't know what to do when he's standing in front of him. He's like, the right hand's going to hit me, but if I don't watch out for that hook, I'm getting dropped every single time. And he was just frozen. So who's Devin Haney, though? He a warrior. He really is, yo. He's a warrior. He didn't get enough credit for that, man. Nah. My, my man got up, and he was hurt. Like, wobbled hurt. and hurt bad, and he made it to the end, and he was close. Think about that. Like, he won rounds in the middle. Yeah, I gave Devin... Um, I think Devin won, like, two through... Yeah. Six. Six. Something yeah. like that. And then like six, six, Ryan six, six. I could get yeah. Yeah, six could go either way, but I say two through six, but then seven, seven on down, it was seven to ten was definitely Ryan. Because he knocked him down in the seventh round, knocked him down in the I think Ryan took the eighth off. I think he was like a little tired. And then the tenth or the eleventh, I think he knocked him down. Yeah, yeah. Did he break a jaw? No, nah, he didn't uh, break uh, his nah. jaw. That's what people are saying. No, nah, he didn't break his jaw. There's a lot yeah. of rumors around this shit. That shit is funny everywhere. That shit is hilarious. <laughs> this picture gonna be in Mexican barbershops everywhere. That's hilarious. His first knockdown. <laughs> nah, that's hilarious. <laughs> that shit is funny as shit. Salute to all the Mexicans out there, man. Yeah, shout out. How come he's not getting any heat for not making weight? Because he marketed the fight brilliantly. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just amazing. Like, the, the fact that he won, everybody was 
blown away. Nobody mm-hmm. thought that he was actually going to win. So I think he came from such a deficit in our minds that we don't even care that he was overweight. And it yeah. cost him money. I think he had like a fine or some shit. Or he had to give up like 600000 in his purse. And he bet uh, Devin half a million dollars for every pound he was overweight. And they said he honored it. Oh, wow. So it's like... But I mean, like, he comes in at a major advantage when you don't have to do the whole dehydration, rehydration situation. But on, but on fight night, they all both were bigger. Fight night, he yeah, 160. But if uh, Hanley had to do the rehydration, he's much weaker than somebody who's just coming in at... There's an advantage. Well, that's what Ryan said about uh, the tank fight. Ryan said that's what happened to him in the tank fight. It, the problem with the tank fight is that the rehydration clause limited how much he could add to his weight. Mm-hmm. That's a real issue. Getting down to 140, which Ryan probably could have done, and then getting back up to 160 is doable. Going down to whatever he was for the tank fight, 135 or 137 or whatever the fuck yeah. it was, and then stopping at 143 or whatever the hell it was, that is where it fucks you. Because now you actually can't physically rehydrate. Mm-hmm. So that's a huge advantage for tank. I want to see that fight again. Me too. I want to see Ryan fight him all. I want to see Ryan fight Shakur. I want to see Ryan fight uh, Lopez. I want to see Ryan fight Tank again. Like he said on Breakfast Club, that's his dream. He said he want to go through. He said he might give Shakur a shot. But what he really want to do is he want to run through Haney. He wants to fight Lopez. Then he wants to fight Tank in a rematch and then retire. Shakur Shakur need to have another fight where he looks entertaining. I think his last fight... Last fight was boring. It was boring. It was. We don't want to see boring fights, so he needs to go out there, win in spectacular fashion. Then you get to call out Garcia. I think if Gervonta wants to make some money right now... You got to go back and get that rematch. Mm. That's the money fight. But Tank got to get past Frank Martin this summer, though. True. True. Got to get past Frank Martin first, buddy. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Because I cannot stand here to look... Think that you think a Drake song is named after He's you? So I refuse. Mad. You just get little like. There might be some double entendre. You just get. Little, I mean, why? Like, why would it be called Taylor exactly. Made? Exactly. It? It's not. It's called Taylor Made. Taylor Made. Let's add the it to it. It's cool. Oh, it's not called Taylor Made It. Mm. No, it's Taylor it's called, Made. It's okay. Oh, that's okay. got nothing to do with it. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. A win still a win because he still said Taylor Made. That's still it. Is just two little letters. That's it. It is two. Follow letters. Taylor Made It Productions, y'all. Okay. Jesus Christ. Follow who you wear. Off a cliff. Um, don't eat Chick-fil-A. What the fuck does that mean? Taylor, what is the memes of the week? That was rude. All memes necessary. <laughs> Yo, what are the memes that are necessary this week, Taylor? Did y'all see this? Y'all comes to eat Chick-fil-A? Oh, no. I don't fuck with my Chick-fil-A, man. That? I don't want to know Classic about all this. coming out of chick fil Oh, uh, no. Nah, come on, Taylor. I, I don't want to see this. I, we don't even know if that's really Chick-fil-A. That is me. The chicken ate some plastic. God did my, my heavenly father, Jesus Christ, I'll give you all the glory. Um, That's the fucking chicken sandwich talking about. I love you so much. <laughs> 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 By the way, that ain't gonna stop nobody from eating Chick Fil A. That motherfucker took that plastic out oh and God. put them some Polynesian sauce Dang. on that shit and, and then ate, ate the whole thing. Oh, that's crazy! Tell I want to see a whole condom on the fucking chicken crap. right there. Yeah, that's wild. No, no, get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here! <laughs> that's wild. I don't believe that. Taylor, what other memes we got? Uh, uh, that's gross. Um, that ain't gonna stop nobody from eating Chick Fil A. By the way, Mm-mm. shout out to Chick Fil A workers, man. Y'all are so much nicer down south. One of the worst things that ever happened was Chick Fil A yeah. coming up north, y'all, and hiring all y'all rude ass New Yorkers and New Jerseyans. Have they been rude to you? I mean, they're just not the same level of warmth. As How Chick Fil A was so warm down south. I'm trying to understand that. I think it was just a thing. It was like a cultural thing, right? Like you just knew Chick Fil A workers were nice. Yeah. And I don't think that translated up here. Like they don't know the niceness of the Chick Fil A worker. So they're not. They don't know how they're supposed to act in those positions. Yeah, exactly. Got you know you. what I'm saying? Got like you. the new Chick Fil A workers are the clear employees. Yo, yo, they got clear employees a, nice yeah. as shit. They really yo. are. Mm. They really are. Shout out to Clear. They're trying to cancel Clay in California. Why? Because Democrats ain't got shit else better to do. Why would they want to cancel it? Uh, a senator in um, California, Senator uh, Josh Newman, he put put a bill in place. He's trying to get a bill passed that uh, bans Clear because he said Clear benefits the wealthy. Yeah, that's the whole point. It's what $189 clear? a year. What is Clear? Oh, it's, yeah. a, it's at the airport where you uh, it's like TSA you just get through free. faster. Yeah, they, you just get through fast. It's one hundred and eighty nine dollars a year. When I first when I first signed up for Clear, it might have been ninety nine dollars. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uber benefits the wealthy. Every what doesn't benefit the wealthy in America? Yeah. Ferraris like, um, benefit the wealthy. You Democrat- can't cancel shit just because it benefits the wealthy. Democrats got like it's like yo, there's much 
greater things you could be doing in uh, California if you want to help with economic like equity. What, Charlemagne? I mean, <laughs> fucking like what, child? You want them to help child out the tax homeless credits. population? Yes, Wait. child tax credits, housing. Oh. You know, uh, you actually want people in government to do something productive for the people? Is that what your expectation <laughs> yes. of government is? Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Because the fuck about no. whether clear is in California no. or not, man. No, Like, no, Jesus no, no. Christ, let people, if they want to pay an extra $189 a year, to, you know, get through security a little bit faster, let them. If you can afford a flight, you can afford $189 My, a year. Yo, the average flight in America is $380. You can afford one flight. The average you can afford flight is 389 I'm about to exactly. sign up for it right now. It's good at every airport. You've never seen it? You it's good at all the airports every, to have no, it. Not every I fly airport. every weekend three times a weekend. It is almost every single airport. Yeah. Yeah. It's like 50 airports throughout yeah. the country. You're going to be good. But right, now cool. they're doing this thing, uh, the digital ID, where Did they it. just scan your face. Did it. And now, that too. But Did that it. line is shorter than the clear Take line. Take all now. my freedoms, yo. I don't care. I got it all. Anything to get me on the flight quicker. That's right. I got it all. Take it all. I don't take off my sneakers. I don't take off shit. Somebody told me today there's still a 9 11 tax on flights. Good. They said, if you look at it, it says like a 9-11 surcharge. Good. You ever heard of that, Chris? Charge it. Does no. that get us there faster? Look that up, Taylor. 9-11 <laughs> tax. What gets us there faster? Hey, listen, I, I got it all. I got pre-checked, uh, clear. Uh, I'm, let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I, I got to get through this Take motherfucker. Take my information, bro. Save Take my it. information. Take, Take it. it. I don't even like it when I look at the thing and it doesn't recognize me immediately. Look at that. Look you know that. what I mean? Yeah. Okay. I don't like that. Like when you have to go a little phone. Yeah, like, what, like, what are we doing right now? <laughs> you see this, right? What is this? Nine, these may include the September 11th security fee of 560 for each one-way journey. So they could so they could have the dude the on US. the plane. So they could have the guy pistoled up on the plane. 12 hours will result in an initial fee of 560 per person yes. being applied to that I like journey. That. International arrival tax at 2110. So every time you buy a plane ticket, yeah. it's an extra 560. Good. Good. You know? But that goes to the guy. There's an agent on every flight, right? Isn't that the idea? It's supposed to be, but. Is it? Yeah, it's supposed to be, but. I don't, I don't think they're doing that on every flight. Why not? Yeah, same. I haven't been on plane they're by not myself. Doing on spirit. <laughs> well, they might not go on spirit. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you shouldn't be on spirit. I don't go on spirit. Why not? Why not? I mean, why not? I'm just telling you why. Why not? I, don't I know. like Delta and JetBlue more so Delta than anything. You, yeah, you, Delta's you, good. You, well, you strike me as a Southwest kind of girl. I only been on Southwest maybe one time. Really? But why is Spirit a bad one or something? Shut up. You want to see all the fights that be happening and everything? Spirit is the Peter Pan bus in the sky. It's Spirit. <laughs> that's what the fuck Spirit is. But they JetBlue did just buy Spirit, but I don't give a fuck. Did? Yes. That still ain't going to make me get on that motherfucker. Spirit's expensive low key, though. Really? Really. Because you have to pay for everything. Oh, like, you end up spending a lot of yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you might spend 36 What eight? I remember one time I bought a $36 Spirit airline ticket round trip. Hmm. From New York to L.A. No, what? That's crazy. That's right. And guess what? It was too good to be true. That flight never took off. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was at the fucking airport. That shit never goddamn took off. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Why are you bringing up Taylor again? Because I want y'all to see. See Taylor what? With accused. I didn't get it personally. Of what? Of shading Kim Kardashian and new song. Thank you. Thank you what? Thank Amy. you, Amy. That's about being bullied. Your kid comes home singing a song only us two is going to know is about you. I'm... Slaps. Slaps. Taylor Swift makes herpes commercial music. <laughs> she slaps, though. <laughs> Yo, son. Herpes <laughs> commercial music is crazy. That's perfect. Dude. What's wrong with Taylor, yo? Taylor, why are you acting like you don't know them commercials? <laughs> <laughs> Technically, I really don't because I don't have commercials. You don't have commercials? I don't have like. So how, how'd you find out about Valtrex? What are you talking about? <laughs> you got cable? I don't have cable. I just use the streaming services. Oh, I'm not mad at Taylor for dissing Kim. She should get in on the action. Why not? Everybody else dissing each other. Mm -hmm. mm. But it's so crazy how they thought that this was. I don't know. I didn't. I wouldn't. It's not so crazy recognize. that you thought we gave gave a fuck about this topic. That, you, <laughs> yeah, that is crazy. Why? I mean, you we can make something out of Taylor nothing. Swift. We can make something out of nothing, but I just don't see the real point. Yeah, me neither. Um, what is not that? when Ashanti and Nelly are pregnant. Ooh. Ooh. Not when Ashanti and Nelly are expecting. Taylor hates that. Yeah, you do hate what that. What are you talking about? You do hate that, Taylor. <laughs> How do you feel well, about that? You're such a hater, yo. A win is a win with Drake, so thank nah, you for the shout-out. Really Why are you so mad? Yo, you really I'm hate over it, here yo. just 
trying to show you all the content and you just hating on why me. Do you, no, seriously, I'll just say, why do you think Drake, why do you think that's about you? I think he listens to the podcast. And, and, and you thought that he was inspired by your segment last week and he I wanted sure to put a song. A win's a win. You think it Look, has nothing to do with the, the fact day, Taylor Swift dropped it? It doesn't even matter. At the end of the day. Forget the fact that at the end at of the, the record, end Drake end says day, why he named it Taylor Made. Forget all at that. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because, like I said, Taylor Swift isn't going by Taylor Made. I am. So, yes, a win is a win. Now. Hold on. So, you think you invented Taylor Made? I Yo, didn't say I that. I need to go through life. I didn't say that at all. No, that's fine. Hmm. Now, <laughs> what do y'all think? About what? <laughs> <laughs> About what? What the fuck is going on? What Why is everybody so the Lululemon, yo? yo. <laughs> like, people want shit to be about them when it's not. It's so weird. Yeah, Why can't a win be a win for me? What? Why you keep saying that a win is a win? A win what is, is a that? win. I mean, I mean, after the the the, the shit you sh- did about Drake, like you called him a white boy. Yeah, you actually, called him, you called him actually, gay. You want him actually, to lose? You, you said that we were lose. dick riding. Dick call suck dick and I don't take dick any of that swallowing. back. Now all of a so, sudden you're just so happy he Because put, at the end of the day, is Drake not a celebrity? He's famous. And so he a has celebrity that's all it my takes. My caption. Oh no, sorry. My production on his caption. No. Now y'all can say not, that. He, he didn't sh- say y'all names at all. He shot not Taylor Swift. <laughs> well, he said your name, but he didn't say your name. He shot not Taylor Swift. <laughs> I hope you didn't tell your parents this show. She did. They don't care if I chill them. But I mean, remember my dad will. But it went to win. Chill out. So look, do y'all I knew, like this? I knew this was going to be the energy this week. <laughs> I knew it. And it is kind of amazing. I Don't you but wish you were that? But it's not warranted. But don't you wish you were that delusional? The Lululemon? Yeah, don't no. you wish you were that delusional? I don't I'm delusional. I'm, no, I'm not. Why is he do delusional? You not think you, what do you think you look like? Huh? <laughs> First of all, what are you saying right now? Who do you think you look like? I don't think I look like nobody. Oh. I look like me. Who do people think I look like? No. Who do you <laughs> think you look like? Who do people think I look like? Who does the person that you think I look like? Who does I don't he think you look who like does him. he say he gets mistaken for? I'm just saying. What do you want me to do? This that is fact. Yo, Mark Zuckerberg keeps it hairy, yo. yo. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, Zuck, Mark Zuckerberg. Yo, Zuck got his Caitlin Clark out. Mark Zuckerberg. Yo, yo, yo. No, don't tell me Mark got his Caitlin Clark out. Get out of here, Taylor. Yo, that is some of the wildest <laughs> shit. Antonio Brown is a wild Yo, he boy. is a like, throwback why would you, wild ass. Why? <laughs> like, That's not what Zuck really looked like, is it? N- no. Does he look like not, that with not, a beard? He's handsome yeah, with a beard. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Y'all this dudes a, are cheating with your beards. He's handsome with a beard, but not this seven hundred billion dollars. He really still nah, looks, he looks like crazy this. there. Yeah, it don't matter. Mark getting his cuck, his cock sucked any which way, whenever he wants it to, by whatever he wants it to. He's got seven hundred billion dollars. Go, go to the next one. By his wife. <laughs> he's married. Yes. Yeah, he's married. Got kids. <laughs> All right, let me see he his has kids wife. Too? No, I don't think so. Let Priscilla, Ch- wife, Priscilla Chang, I think her name is. Asian? Okay. Come yeah. on, you know, Chris okay. Morrow. Okay. Stop okay. Chris Morrow on him. Okay. Oh you think Mark Zuckerberg got side chicks? Mm. Oh, this no, wife looks man. way older than him. Yo, <laughs> this girl's crazy. <laughs> this girl's a crazy girl. Yo, because she knows, right? She's a woman. She knows how I'll be interpreted as a woman. She's younger than you, Taylor. She was born in 1985. When were you born? born? You guys are disrespectful. No, I am not. Born. I'm not in the 80s. I'm in the 90s. I'm oh, you were born in the 90s? Oh, okay. I was born in the 90s? 91. There's oh. no way. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't try me. No, I don't honestly me. did it. Oh wait, so now disrespectful to say a woman's older than she is? No, I'm saying y'all know damn well that I don't look older than. How old is she, yo? 1985, 38. She's 39 years old. 39. How old do you think she looked, Taylor? 
I'm not doing that. She just looks older than him. That's all. <laughs> 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 That's crazy, yo. Yo, that Drake feature confidence is different. Way, he, when, how you, how when you get Drake featured, you come oh into the app with a different God. confidence. Yo. <laughs> I, I know. Say, you do have a different confidence now that you want Drake. Mark is how, like, I don't think she's older, but she's giving, like, Tudor vibes. <laughs> yo, sorry, come on. Yeah. Come on. I don't think she's older. No, they're the same age. That's Charlie, crazy. come on. Yeah. Yeah. You don't think she's Charlie, get out of here. Get out of here. I think she's a doctor. She's Charlie, a doctor. got it. I believe she's a doctor. What kind of tutor does she look like? Come on. <laughs> what subject do you think she looks like? Come on, Charlie. You look... <laughs> driving. I think I think she's I think she's a, I think she's a driving instructor. That's what I think. Whoa, what were you what were you thinking? This is really... I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah. You don't think which one do you yeah, think? Yeah, crazy. Charlotte. 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 Which one were you thinking? Charlotte. Oh my God. Charlotte. Man. I don't know, man. Cody? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Something to do with numbers. I don't know, man. Why? Why? I just think so. Listen, what else? She looks gonna... good right here. Yo, stop looking. Stop doing that to people's wives. Yeah, you're really crazy. That's someone's wife. That's someone's wife. Fuck y'all not talking. We, what, we don't talk about, about people's wife. wives? Yeah, you can't. That's that. crazy. About my mom? What we say about your mom? All right. That she has a great pot? <laughs> You, you said gray pie? Great. Great. Oh, I'm about to sound like great. Great. Wow. Great. No, ah, you know I didn't say that. No. I don't think you said great, yo. Nah, don't do that. Taylor, I don't think you said great. Yo. I think that was a callback. Nah, nah. Taylor. No. No. This is what I'm going to do to y'all right here. Nah, Drake, what? Drake, no. Taylor made, Taylor made, Taylor made it. What yep. Nicki Minaj did to the fan, grab something and throw it the fuck back. I don't like when people that's do That's so play. dumb. That's just a lawsuit right there. Boom. No, I don't mind her doing that because that's self-defense, yo. No, it's not. Yeah, man, you can't 50 do had to 50 had to pay. Yeah, yeah but don't, why do people go to shows to throw shit at people on stage? If yeah, it ain't panty, dumb. stop throwing shit on stage, Because it's an easy payday. You pick the right person who you know is going to throw it right back. I think that's self-defense. What if she hits somebody else? Yeah, I think if you throw, if, you, if she throw it at Nikki and it hit Nikki, Nikki has the right to throw it back into but the what crowd. If, what if it hits someone else when she throws it back? I mean, yeah. Yeah, if it hits somebody else. That's the risk that Nikki's taking by throwing it back. Nikki might got good aim. I mean, listen, if Cardi didn't get sued for throwing a microphone, Nikki ain't gonna get sued for throwing a goddamn Paper. plastic toy or whatever the fuck that was. Yeah, probably. I, I want to go see Nikki's show. But when then, is it coming to New York? I don't know. I just don't want to get jumped by barbs. <laughs> I just want to see how she is on stage. I haven't seen her on stage in a while. She's a great entertainer. And she's selling out arenas. I don't know why people aren't um, talking about that more. She sold out, what, 20-something? 20 something arenas or something like that. Oh, wow. On the Gag City tour. Amazing. Like she's doing numbers, you know Amazing. what I mean? Like, like you gotta give her props. Like she's still a rapper at the end of the day. She built when, a real fan base. Yeah, whenever you see rappers selling out arenas, it's just, it's arenas, right? Or am I tripping? Looks like an arena to me. Yeah. When you see rappers selling out arenas, you gotta salute that. I don't give a fuck how you may personally feel about the rapper. Like hip hop is still a genre that you know a lot of venues and people front on. So when you see somebody like Nikki able to go out there and show arenas by herself. Yeah, that's crazy. You know what yeah, I'm dope. saying? Yeah. By her motherfucking self. You got to salute her. You got to salute her. Wasn't she having trouble selling tickets? Like, not that long ago? I don't I know. Thought there was, I thought I remember seeing that. I don't know if that. it was her. Because she's always had, like, a super strong fan base. Huh. But I do know that, yeah. But I don't think her. I don't know. Shout out to Caitlin Clark. We mentioned her earlier. Yeah. She's close to yeah. closing a $20 million deal with Nike. Round of applause for Let's her. Let's go. Oh, Get great. your money. Supply yeah. and demand. The report citing sources states Clark is expected to receive a signature Nike shoe. Those same sources said Under Armour and Adidas also made offers. You can't beat that check, bro. You can't beat that check. Because, you know, at the end of the day, Nike going to put the money up. But also... I just think it's something about being an athlete and you want to see somebody walking around in your Nike shoe. You can't guarantee you they're going to walk around in the Under Armour shoe. You can't guarantee that they're going to walk around in the Adidas. That Nike, if you're it's gonna fly... It. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. That girl Sabrina Ionescu got a dope uh, Nike basketball sneaker. And I've seen a lot of dudes hooping in it. Really? Yeah. She's nice. Caitlin, as long as she plays her game in the WNBA, 
She will make so much goddamn money in endorsements. It's it's gonna be sick. She's gonna change the league. It's the same thing we was talking about last week or the week before last. Like she is the first of her kind. Yep. She's going to change the WNBA financially. And people make this big fucking deal about like what her salary is. You get paid for what the viewership is now. That's right. If you change the viewership, you make more money. Give it a minute. And Kayla's gonna cause so much like like, I love the conversation that Caitlyn's already created, especially around Asia Wilson, because Asia Wilson is somebody who should have her own signature shoe. Why? Because she's a phenomenal talent. She is the best basketball player in the WNBA now. And, you know, Asia already got a lot of endorsement deals. She's a New York Times bestseller. She signed the fucking Rich Paul. Like, Nike or somebody should give her a shoe. Adidas or somebody should why give should, her a shoe. Why should she get a shoe? Because the best players in their sports get shoes. Especially in basketball, you know, and she's and she and she's proven she can move product. I think that's the other thing people fail to realize. Like Nike knows I can give Caitlin Clark this twenty million dollars, and there's gonna be an ROI. She puts butts in seats. She clearly, you know, is Does box Asia office. do that? Um, that's yes. A, the reason why I say why is like I'm not compelled to watch Asia play. I don't know if other people are. I don't know. Oh, if I am. Made, but, no, I, but I'm biased because I'm from South Carolina. Obviously, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Asia might be the most transformative player in the WNBA history. I, I just personally are, am unaware of it. Oh, so, no. She's, she's a beast. Like, pull up her, pull up Asia Wilson stats, Taylor. No, no. I, I believe you. I guess what I'm saying is like, Steph Curry changed the way that people fundamentally play basketball. So he got people to buy a, a what the fuck was it? Under Armour. Why bought that? I bought it. <laughs> you bought it? 100%. Oh, no. I hooped in that shit. I saw it when I was, when I was uh, playing in like the basketball leagues in the city. You used to see people in them shits all the fucking time. Really? And this is a non-Nike Adidas Reebok sneaker. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden became a bestseller. That's crazy. That's what transforming the play is. Allen Iverson had a Reebok. Yeah. We were buying them shits. Because Allen Iverson balled like that. Yep. Yeah. Jordan, Kobe, like, you got to be a transformative player. Not her stats. Full of her, uh, what do you call them shit? Accolades, rewards, uh, that type of shit. Like, put it this way. Nobody want a Joel Embiid shoe? Yeah, well, because he keeps getting hurt. Sure. But, like, he's an objective. But he could sell a shoe. I ain't buying it. I think he's sponsored by Skechers or some shit. Like, but but that, I, see, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, the reason he's with Skechers is because nobody else wants it because the other companies have gone, he's not going to sell sneakers. His game isn't the type of game to sell sneakers. L little little men sell more sneakers than Yeah, because men. we aspire to have their game. To them closer. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nah, I bought them Shaqs, bro. But I'll, Shaq you know, in was my mind, I'm In my mind, I'm Shaq's size. But think so. about it. Shaq was transformative. <laughs> he was breaking backboards. He yeah, played the game. Yeah, yeah, Shaq, yeah. I, I'm not saying he played the game like a little man, but earlier in his career, if you guys remember, he was so fucking agile. He was right. jumping out the fucking gym. It was unbelievable. Nobody ever seen anything like that. I bought Larry Johnson's Converse, bro. La Yo, Larry Johnson. Grandma another one. Grandma Ma. One of the great, when black guys could wear skirts and nobody would cry nobody about it. Nobody gave a Flying fucks. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, right? It was fuck? just funny. It was just a funny thing. It was a funny great thing. Great character. Great marketing campaign. Listen, Asia Wilson, two time WNBA champion, went back to back. WNBA finals MVP, two times WNBA MVP, two time WNBA defensive player of the year, best WNBA player at the FB Awards, five time WNBA All Star, WNBA rookie of the year, WNBA all rookie team. I just think Asia Wilson deserves wow. a sneaker. No, listen. Does her game have that flair? Exactly. That That's what I'm trying to say. She's I, very well. No, it's two I, different I, positions. I, I, I legitimately don't know. Two different like, positions. Aza plays like power forward center. See, that's the you know what I'm saying. But she can still shoot. She plays like right. uh, she plays like the centers in the NBA play. Sure, now. but nobody cares. Like nobody wants. Joe Kitch is the best player in the NBA, right? Yes. Nobody wants to buy his sneaker. Nobody wants to play like him. He he is just. But he's the best player. Kyrie could say some fucking anti-Semitic uh, shit, wild stuff, and I see him play, and I'm like. I need all them sneakers. I wouldn't buy <laughs> every a, single day. I wouldn't buy a Jokic sneaker, but I'll buy a Jokic scarf or I'll buy a Jokic <laughs> a Jokic cow. He should make a dad shoe. There you go. <laughs> he like a, like a boat a, shoe. Yeah, like so. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you might be yeah. right. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that could be Asia. Asia could be the best player in the league, but the companies know that nobody really wants a hoop like that, th so they're not going to invest in a sneaker. But for don't her. you got to give her a shot? You at least no. got to give her a chance. No. Cuz if you gave who, who got a signature shoe in the Sabrina. WNBA? Caitlin Clark, Sabrina. Does who Sabrina even play for? I don't know, but Liberty. I, I think she plays for the Liberty. Oh, I didn't know. That. I Pull think up Sabrina stat show. What is Sabrina doing to have a sneaker that Asia's not? That's I, what I need to know. I think Sabrina got such a strong cosign from Kobe that, like, but to my point, Asia signed the clutch. 
She's with Rich Paul. What's LeBron's saying? posting about her all the time. Like, Rich, New get it done. That's New Balance. New Balance? Yeah. Mike. Well, yeah, well, no, Rich Paul has a... Huh? Your mic, Just make sure your mic is... Rich Paul has a deal with New Balance. So get it done. But it's fucking... I'm saying it's one of the biggest agencies in the game, if not the biggest. Funny. They should be able to get Asia Wilson a sneaker. Anthony... What's the unibrow guy's name again? Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis. Davis. Nobody want to hoop like him. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not buying no fucking Anthony Davis who objectively incredibly skilled for his size, yeah, yeah, amazing yeah. touch, incredible basketball player. But I don't want to play basketball like that. Damn. Like, I don't want to buy... I want to play... Who sneaker would we buy in the NBA Kyrie right? Irving. Anthony Kyrie. Edwards right now. Anthony oh, my Edwards. God. Ant yeah. Edwards. He is... Like, if they, oh, if they don't get him out of Minnesota soon, like... No, he's right where he needs no, to be, No, he needs to be man. in New York. He needs to be in L.A. No. These guys are going to make such a deep run in the playoffs this year. They, they're fine. That no, Minnesota no, no. team is great. Shout out to my boy Tim Connolly. Tim Connolly is the president of Minnesota Timberwolves. He was also the president of the Denver Nuggets. He is the most slept on. He created the Denver Nuggets team to end up winning the championship. He gets fired. They won a championship? Son. Oh shit! Damn, I'm bugging. You tripping? Last year, yes. So yes, he created, he built that team, but Jamal got his knee blown out. Right before they could have won it Who the year before. It? Then he did say again. Nothing. You just guys crazy. <laughs> and now he's over in Minnesota. He builds this team, and they're gonna go fucking crazy. They might go deep run in this playoffs. Yeah. Yes. So yo, they got a great time, y'all. Anthony Edwards is right where he needs to be. No, nah, he needs to be in New York. No, nah, the, the league, the pressure. league, the league needs him in New York. I don't know if I. We had this conversation. I don't believe that anymore, yo. Like we watched some games this week. Who had the most exciting games this weekend? Next. Wow. Shit. It ended the Knicks. The Lakers last night. Okay, let me shut up. Yeah. yeah. I would say this. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm biased. I think uh, Maxi has a very relatable game to Yeah, the, players. Kid, the, the kid I think on, kids uh, really like him. Yeah, but you're not yeah. going to buy a Tyro and Maxi sneaker just because he's not a big enough you star will. yet. Not yet. He's there. Not yet. Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Man. Butler. I'll tell you why. It's not his game. It's his attitude toward the game. The I think he needs a lunch pail. Say again? Jimmy, give me a Jimmy boots. Butler lunch pail. I'd buy, like, if he had a Timberland line. Nah, a lunch pail, that. a thermos. He's right, just hard working, like, he's going to get after it. He wants to take the last shot of the game. He's going to turn it up for the playoffs. Like, he has a culture around him right. that we would subscribe to. But I do, it's so, Jimmy's such, like, a unique soul. I could see him not putting out a sneaker and putting out a sandal. He should do hair products. Mm. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yes. What, Taylor? He should do hair products. Who, Jimmy Butler, because he had all the hairstyles? Yeah. That's not his real hair, though. Not Taylor. Either way, though. Let her wear it. (laughs) (laughs) Did you see the video? Speaking of wigs, did you see the video of the guy that goes around with the fucking uh, blower? Yeah. Uh, Blowing wigs. He should get shot. I have been watching that video. (laughs) He's going to get shot. Over and over and over again. He's going to get shot. It is so funny to see the quick reflexes of these black women snagging their wigs right out there. Going to get shot. But forget him. The fact that they had, the, the wig goes, that wig never touches the ground. Yeah, you know They always catch not it. Well, whom, not whom. Not one of them caught it in midair. <laughs> and and they went, all put, catch it in midair. She's still punching and then them. countered, grabbed it, and then started countering so, playing incredible. Incredible. He's going to get shot, though. That's assault <laughs> with a deadly weapon, yo. What is taking a black you woman? You can't take a fucking leaf yeah. blow and blow people's wigs off. <laughs> yo, if you, uh, yo, so you tell me, imagine the women had a skirt on. Yeah. Skirt yeah. flies up in the air. They don't got no panties and the wigs go off. That's not assault. I mean, it, that would be disgusting if they did that. That's assault, bro. <laughs> yeah, I think that. that's some form of assault. You cannot do that to people, yo. That yo, motherfucker's going to end up getting I'm shot. Not, imagine if he did it to Jewish women. That would oh be crazy. Oh, my gosh. That would be hate crime. Yo, but that's are. a good-ass point. Jewish women would definitely be a hate crime. Because yeah. there are many Jewish women that wear wigs. Yeah. That is a great point. Well, they would well, call well, that. well, there are many Orthodox women who wear wigs. Most Jewish women don't wear wigs. I thought they did. All I said Orthodox. Was, all I said was that there are many Jewish women that wear wigs. Why do the Orthodox women wear wigs? Why do you have to carve them into Orthodox because or not? They shave their, don't they shave their hair when, when they, they get, get married. married or something? Yeah, they. It, it's it's part of like the grander, you know, Middle Eastern tradition of you don't want to see women's hair because it's too tempting to men. Essentially, the hair is too th- well. Yeah, skirts down to the ankles. Same thing. I never understood that though, because if the hair is too tempting, then why wear a wig? I don't think that? it was the temptation of the hair. I think it's a sign of respect to God. Hair does tempt you, though. You like that, President Biden? <laughs> what happened? He's a <laughs> notorious hair. Oh, sniffer. he like to sniff. Yo, I heard. I, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I heard Biden like it gray. 
<laughs> he like the he like when they keep it gray. I, I, I heard I heard I heard Biden like when they keep it gray. <laughs> Biden like it when they keep it gray. Man, that tell us somebody they keep it hairy is nasty as shit. <laughs> yeah, son, keep it hairy. Maybe he's a wild so boy for now. Say hairy, like, but for the real, would you say that? What's your, where's your mind at? King? They keep it gray. Damn. <laughs> Yo, what's wrong with, with keeping it gray? I think a lot of moms are grayed out. I don't want to be hairy. I wish I could get a wax right now. Why? What? <laughs> I want to be bald. Well, God helped you with that. No, I'm talking about down there. Oh, really? Yeah, and I got grays. I got quite a few grays down there. Really? Oh, absolutely. And you would get a wax? Hell yeah. You wouldn't get a wax? No, you know how much that hurts? Eh. If it wouldn't be, it takes two seconds. Eh, uh, that's fair enough. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's quick wipe. Uh -uh. I have my ass. So why wax. don't you wax your head? I don't want to. I mean, I don't want to wax my head. I do want to wax down there. Though. I, just, I, I just, I don't know. Get laser. I don't like it hairy. Get laser. So just shave it then. I, I manscape. Okay. Yo, is it a new trend, Taylor, for girls to keep it hairy? Because I've heard that's a new trend. No. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, what's in right now? Is it like the landing what? strip? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I've been out the you game. Tell everybody you're getting married. Yeah. Exactly, that's so wild. <laughs> right. hey. You know how y'all hey. sound? What look like what now? What pussies look like now? <laughs> you know how y'all sound? What y'all got going on down there? Uh, <laughs> that is on Wolf of yeah. Wall Street, when he asked that, he's like, yo, the girls are shaving now. You remember Hell that yeah. part? I remember well, that. that. It was a period piece, Taylor. <laughs> yeah. But it's so crazy. That's the movie was a period piece, so it was it was new. The bald thing was new. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. What's in right now? What are girls doing right now? What the fuck? I don't fuck girls. Oh, now I you don't. Now, now, now you don't fuck girls. You don't. <laughs> this is I've crazy. I never did. You and your friends don't talk I about never these did. trends. Go to some no. Crazy. What the like, hell? I hate liars. Like for no reason. I never fucked a girl. No, but your friends won't be like, "Hey, girl, can I get some tweezers?" A girl eating me out and fucking girls two different things. Okay, that's fair. But back to vagina hair. What is the trend of vagina hair right now? I don't know what other girls do. I know what I do. But no, you but don't talk to them. To, you have yeah. to know because y'all know when it went from bushy to shaving off. Y'all yeah, put out a memo, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't it a memo that went out? It's, it's, it's not a true. memo that goes out about these type of things. No. That happens with dudes. We we All tell the each time. other. <laughs> what? Yeah. So we started hitting it from the back. We had there was a conversation it had, yeah. and we were like, "Yo, you gotta bend them over." And even with the headlines, you think all these men just started getting headlines randomly? No, it was conversation. It was, was a memo one night. Like, yo, we, we put out the memo. We let everybody know where to go. Turkey, Turkey. Miami, Boston. Yeah. Boom. And, and we don't make fun of it anymore. And we don't make, like, nope. Nope. So what about girls? Do you guys have that discussion? It's crazy y'all don't have that camaraderie. We knew y'all hated each other. You really do. <laughs> you really do. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. Yeah, please. <laughs> y'all can't, can't be over here talking to a self-hating person. Yo, shout out to... Make it big, please. Pause. Let's stop and pay some bills. Shout out to Prize Picks. Okay, you can now win up to 100 times your money on Prize Picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into 1000 with basketball, hockey, and college basketball entries today on Prize Picks, America's number one fantasy sports app. Prize Picks has something for every sports fan, from basketball and hockey to League of Legends and everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Caitlin Clark, Connor McDavid, and Jude Bellingham all in the same entry. Prize Picks even offers injury insurance so that your entries stay in place, even if one of your players gets injured for basketball games if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second prize picks will have your back and not count that as a loss prize picks is really simple to play i can make my picks and submit my entry in less than 60 seconds quick withdrawals easy gameplay and an enormous selection of players and stat types of what makes prize picks the number one fantasy sports app this week on prize picks i am selecting i think i'm gonna select anthony edwards for 40 whoa I think I'm going to select Anthony Edwards for 40. He going for it. And Nikola Jokic for more than 10 rebounds. Okay? Yeah. I think I like that. Um, Anthony Davis. Hmm. Now, I'm going to go with Joel Embiid for more than two blocks. And I'm going to go... Ooh, I think this is a good one. Damian Lillard for more than four three-pointers. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. Just download the app today and use code IDIOTS for a first deposit match up to $100. Remember, use code IDIOTS for a first deposit match up to $100 when you download the Prize Pick app. Prize Picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. What's next, Taylor? Hey. This episode has also been brought to you by... 
Blue Chew. The Chew. The Chew, the hardest dicks in the game. The same active ingredients inside Viagra, Cialis. But this is the Chew. This is the one you keep your girl happy with, your wife happy with, your side chick happy with. This what? is the one. No, 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 not for cheating. But if you were to cheat, definitely you want to make sure that your dick is as hard as possible. And Blue Chew would definitely have you right there. BlueChew.com. You use the promo code IDIOTS. You can get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Free, delivered to your doorstep, the hardest dick you've ever had in your life. You're welcome. Let's get back to the show. Charge announcement shows what we got. Madison Square Garden, man. Man. Not this weekend, but next weekend. Incredibly excited. Cannot wait to see you all there. I'm hyped. We got other uh, dates that are that are on the calendar. You can go to theandrewschultz.com for when we're coming to your cities. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm, I'm Are really we excited. getting suited and booted? God, Let me know to. now. Don't have me come out there in a suit. And y'all out there in casual clothes. Nah, all right, let, let me think. Let me think. Let, me, let think. me know. Let me know now. I need to know. If, like, you know what I'm saying? It's the garden. Your dad, yeah. Larry Legend, always oh, collars said. Out. Collars out. Collars out. We need to have Gotta the have collars. A, okay. Might as well yeah. do the suit thing. Gotta do the suit. I mean. At least it may, maybe not a tie, but the blazer. You know what I'm saying? I think Collared it, shirt. Collared shirt. You gotta the do shirt it. gotta have the collar. You gotta do it. 100%. Gotta do it. No, nah, I'm hype, You man. feel pressure? Um. Uh, yeah, you always wanted to. Yeah, I always want to like put on a great show and obviously this one's really important to me the most important but i'm also like really excited and grateful like it's, i've been working my whole professional career for this moment so it's almost surreal that it's happening so yeah it's yeah i'm uh i'm just really excited you think you'll cry i'm sure i'm sure like at some point yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe it'll be after reflecting on it maybe yeah. it'll be the day of but like i'm sure at some point i like feel all of the emotions yeah when the adrenaline subsides, yeah. you know, adrenaline will keep you going for a little while, mm. but eventually that goes away, and then you got to deal with all the feelings that you had. And yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure. Stand-up specials are a lot like college basketball tournaments. Yeah. Talk to me. Because you got to go out there, and you get one opportunity. Well, two in this case. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's two, mm, but it's a different yeah. game. Yes, that's true. So yeah, that, yeah, you, yeah. that one game, yeah, yeah. you could lose. That's true. That is you 100% know? true. That's the stakes but that we like. But you won't, though. That's the stakes we like. You, you built for this moment. Like this is, like you said, you've been working towards this your whole life. I'm hype. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. It's cool. So um, Black Effect Podcast Festival this Saturday, April 27th in Atlanta, Georgia at Pullman Yards. Uh, Wallow and Gilly will be on that stage doing their podcast live. Mandy and Weezy, they'll be on the stage doing Horrible Decisions live. Uh, Dre and Lex, the Poor Minds Podcast, they'll be on the stage live. Uh, Debbie Brown with Deeply Well. Jess Hilarious with Carefully Reckless. The Baller Alert Show. Will Lucas with Black Tech Green Money. We got podcasts of the business of podcasting, the finances of podcasting. We have the Pitch Your Podcast. Podcast activation that'll be there. We got the food trucks, we got the merch, all of that good stuff. Everything that we had last year, man. So we'll see you this Saturday in Atlanta. Thank you to everybody who bought tickets. Thank you to everybody who sold out the VIP. Uh, we'll see you in Atlanta this Saturday, April 27th, Pullman Yards, the second annual Black Effect Podcast Festival, man. Go to eventbrite.com, blackeffect.com slash podcast festival to snatch up those last remaining tickets for this Saturday, okay? And uh, my book, my book will be out. Well, first of all, salute to Alice Randall. My Black Country is a national bestseller now. Let's go. Okay. Nice. Thank you to everybody who went out there and got uh, My Black Country. Um, Yeah. I mean, you know, salute to Kelly Clarkson for having Alice Randall on. Salute to Good Morning America for having Alice Randall on. Um, something else she did. What else did she do? Robin Roberts. Yeah, Good Morning America. Kelly Clarkson. NBC News. It's everybody who's been, you know, leaning into the My Black Country story. Thank you, and I'll uh, make sure you go get that in my book, Get Honest or Die Lying, Why Small Talk Sucks, will be out May 21st. I just announced my book tour um, on my Instagram, but I had to take it down because there was a couple of misprints. It's crazy, so crazy that a book publishing company would have misprints. What do you mean? It's, some mis uh, it's just like some timing was off, you know, and some of the links didn't work, you know, for different bookstores, but it'll be up uh, later today, but... My book, store, my book tour starts May 21st. I'm starting off hitting 10 cities, man. Cause, Amazing. Yeah, you, you don't, you, I don't have the time. But I love making the time for books because it's just a different energy when you're out there promoting a book. For sure. You know, so I'll see y'all on my book tour uh, starting in May. What else we got, Taylor Gang? Um, I came to one of your... Something uh, that keeps it hairy, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Give me something um, that keeps it hairy. Do y'all want to talk about Chris Brown and Quavo? Chris Brown and Quavo 
the beef that I don't even know how or where it started. <laughs> There it is, right here. But I will. What is, it, is that a, a, is that a log with, line? It has to do with Karuchi. Like it's about girls. Chris Brown and Quavo began beefing in 2017 when it was reported that Quavo had started dating Karuchi Tran, whom Brown dated from 2011 to 2015. While a former Migos member and Tran never confirmed the rumors at the time, Brown reportedly felt betrayed that Quavo dated Tran as he considered him one of his good friends. To add fuel to the fire, Tran filed a restraining order against Brown around the time that her dating rumors with Quavo started circulating. Nothing came out of the Quavo and Tran dating rumors after and soon enough Quavo was romantically linked to Saweetie while Tran started dating former New York Giants player Victor Cruz um here's the thing man we saw Chris Brown and Quavo sitting next to each other at some fashion show overseas my mindset is if you and a person can sit next to each other anywhere and nothing pops off, y'all don't really have a problem with each other. Yeah. Because there's, there's, there's four people on this planet. I had to count in my head. Four people on this planet. I'm never sitting next to any fucking Can planet. you tell us? No. I, I would never give them that type of energy. But like, if, if I walked into a venue and they was like, okay, you have to sit here and it's next to that person, either I'm sitting somewhere else and if there's no place else for me to sit, I'm leaving. That's how much of an issue I, I have with these people. And it's not even an issue where I'm like sitting around stewing over it or I hate these people. It's just that I know I've made a conscious decision. I don't fuck with these individuals yeah. in no way, shape or form. So it's like, I'm not sitting by them. So the fact that they could even sit by each other, legs touching, brushing against each other every now and then, you know, like, look, come on, man. Yeah, I'm really, look, look, look. I'm really trying to guess that for though. Look, <laughs> it's good. Yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to guess the four as well. I'm not even looking at these guys. <laughs> like, is it, yeah, they don't look too friendly. But, but, they, uh, but they don't look like they got an issue. You yeah. know, if you got an issue, you whisper to the motherfucker, yeah, yo, you lucky we in here. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a fucking game, bro. You yeah. You boss moving this motherfucker, I'll beat your fucking ass. Like, they not even doing that. You Chris think- is athletic, too. I, I don't know if, uh, I think I'm giving Chris the nod in the fight. I like how Quavo's on his, acting like he's on his phone. Quavo, all you got to do is act, act like you're into the fashion show like Chris is. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's what I do. Well, that's what I do when I don't want to make small talk with somebody. I, get, I just get on my motherfucking phone. They don't care nowadays. But you don't have to do that. You're at a fashion show. All I'm simply what if, saying, huh? What if he's like secretly hitting Karuchi in front of him? Like, what if he's doing some slick shit like that? Mm. Stop. It's not but, no, for real. He wasn't even with Karuchi at the time this happened. How do you know they're just not texting? Oh, cut it out. No, they're not. My point is, if they were sitting next to each other, there's no issue. Fashion week, where, where was this at? I don't even know where the fuck this was at. But if you could sit next to a person and keep it cordial in that close of a proximity, you could do that at all times. Yeah. So it's like the disc records and everything else, it's like, eh, whatever. You know, I'm, I, I'm, I, I guess people are entertained. I guess. Hmm. What else we got, Taylor? I do find it strange, too, though, like, like Taylor, I mean, Qu- uh, Quavo had, I don't like Chris Brown bringing up takeoff and wishing death on uh, Quavo. Yeah, Chris Brown brought up takeoff in his diss record and wished death on Quavo, said that people wished it was Quavo. Yeah. That's corny. Garbage. And then Quavo using takeoff on a record that's so, like, aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. Knowing how. Take off went out. God bless the day. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, come on, guys. Everybody relax. Like, yeah. it's not, like it, I could be wrong. I'm just on the outside looking in. Y'all know better than me because y'all are each other. But it don't seem like it's that big of an it's issue. It's just bad time for beef. It feels like, I'm not saying this is the exact thing that happened, but it feels like someone over there went, wow, everybody's really interested in this Drake uh, Kendrick beef. What if I also drum up a beef? Why do people beef? think beefs are manufactured, though? That's what I'm saying. It feels like, like if if you felt like this for the past five years, why not say it? Yeah. Like, what do you? Well, why are you waiting for this week when everybody's talking about rap beef? I just think a lot of the ways. Bad that, timing. I get what you're saying. A lot of times, the way people create is like they don't know something can work until they see it work, and then they go, "Oh, now I'll do that." Yeah. So, y'all know Drake's gonna drop again, right? No. Yeah, he's gonna drop again. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be surprised if Drake drop again this week. No. But I, I, if, when he drops this week, it's not gonna be. It's going to be a diss, but I think it's going to be more of a hit record. 
where he's dissing people on it. Mm. Like, this is what Drake does. Like, Drake ain't gonna stay on the beef too long. Drake is one person who stays getting the money. He stays about mm. the money. So he gave you push-up, didn't put it on DSPs till a week later. He, the AI record ain't come, it's not coming out on DSPs. And I heard, and this probably is just a complete rumor, but I heard that he um, he's, he's like a part owner of this AI company. And so this that first song was just the rollout to the AI technology, because hmm. I'm sure people are already asking how did he do that? What what t- what type of technology did he did he use to do that? So don't be surprised if you see like an article that comes out talking about the company that he used and things of that nature. Hmm. But also, he put out one song on DSPs a week later, not putting the AI song out. But then with this this next record, I think that he's going to drop. He's going to make it a moment. It's Drake. It's fucking. April, summertime right around the corner. You think he's not going to give us one? Uh, to have true. That's playing on the radio 100 miles per hour? That's playing in the clubs everywhere? I mean, it'd be smart. And he's throwing a couple of shots at his, at, at, at his foes? But my only concern is, like, at that point, does it seem too thirsty? No. You put out three, the other guy put out none. Yo, what's up with Kendrick, yo? This, don't know. They said that he's dropping your album, though, and that maybe he's. Well, he should. I'm not mad at that at this, point, at this moment. Why? Because, because Kanye West and his titties into the, into the <laughs> Royal Rumble, and nobody asked for him to come running out to the ring jiggling. I'm not mad at that. If I'm Con- if I'm Kendrick, I don't want to be a part of the Royal Rumble. This is supposed to be a D- WrestleMania main event, me and this individual. Hmm. So after this Royal Rumble shit. G- subsides I'll get back now to you back into it. I'll get back to you oh, man and cause I mean Kendrick does always move on his own time and Kendrick forced no. all everybody he's right forced now, this shit everybody's playing with the cards that Kendrick dealt oh, that's what you do in the 48 Laws of Power play with the cards I deal I put down like that like that was number one in the country for three weeks in a row all of these guys had to react to me Cole had to react to me Drake had to react to me you know like ugh, I respect it you know so what I'm just saying, he, everybody was saying that he's had a song that he's been sitting on forever. He's been asking for the smoke. Every single day that passes, it's taking away the impact that the I'm song could possibly you. have. I'm with you. I am absolutely with you. But at this moment, I'm not interested. Kanye really ruined it for me. It's literally like the guy who came over to dinner and you're like, you know, I don't want to eat no more, man. Yep. I ain't even motherfucking hungry no more, man. I'm going the fuck home, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was hungry as a motherfucker. Yeah. motherfucker. Who invited this motherfucker? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Before he did that, though, you know, he put out like, he put out something talking about how he's the greatest rapper and these rappers, yeah, he was trying to get into the fight anyway. <laughs> uh, Kanye Kanye don't even realize like and I, I mean I guess for all intents and purposes he's still an icon but I keep telling y'all over and over it's very important how you land the plane yeah. if you land that plane and the wheels don't come out you crash and burn like you, people ain't looking at you in that way no more like yeah. we should be looking at we, Kanye should walk in the room and people should be in awe like yeah. like what, what, what Hove got mm. yeah. what, what Dr. Dre got what yeah. Snoop got, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, like, yeah, it's like, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, uh, that Kanye look like he keep it hairy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's how you look at him, like, uh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Is this a win for Drake? Because does the fight just stay open for months and months until he responds? Or this is technically a win. And then if Kendrick does I drop got, on... Listen, I got Drake up on the scorecards. I do. I got Drake up on the scorecards. I do. So, it's a forfeit. I I mean, listen. I I, I don't know if it's a. I don't know. If, I, I, I'm not calling the fight. Kendrick hasn't called the fight. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying right now we on a TV timeout. Like there's some shit that happened in the stands. You know what I mean? Some players ran onto the court. Some, right, some right. people ran onto the court that we don't want on the court, Kanye. Mm. So after we clear the court, you know what I'm saying, and get rid of this this melee and all of this shit like that, you know, then we can get back to it. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm personally saying. Mm. Well, listen, DC Young Fly. Did you see what he said about BBLs? No, tell me. Play what he said, Taylor Gang. Shout out to Kid Cuddy too, man. You're not a kid no more. You need yeah. to drop the kid and just call yourself Cuddy. Kid Cuddy was injured after jumping off stage at Coachella. Just because you do the festivals with the youngins, you don't have to do what the youngins do. Bro, just, okay. I, let me tell you something. 
as much fun as it is to make fun of Kid Cudi, I remember I jumped off stage once. We were doing the shows in L.A. at the Orpheum. Mm -hmm. Why would you remember that? that? Yeah. (laughs) The stage is probably, I don't know, what is the stage? Four feet, five feet or something like that? Yeah, probably about four. The impact on my fucking feet and heels and (laughs) knee joints... I thought I fell off a building. <laughs> so when I saw that happen at Kid Cudi, I wanted to laugh at him, but I have felt every physical and emotional pain that he felt in that moment. I get what he was trying to do. Let's get in there with the people. Let's rock out. Let's have some fun. There's an age where you cannot do that anymore. It's sit your old ass down, That's Cudi. It. Okay, middle-aged Cudi. You're not a kid no more. <laughs> My cousin Tony... Perm, perm will get you straight. One of the best trainers in the world. He always says jumping and running keeps you young. So he makes us like he makes us do a lot of like jumping exercises. Plyometrics. Pyro, yeah, pyrometric, power push, all of that Fly shit up. like that. Whatever the fuck. He <laughs> makes us do all of that. You know what I'm saying? And some running because he said it keeps you young. But even with that, I'm not jumping in no goddamn crowd with those kids. Yeah. Yeah. He's bugging. He broke his foot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he broke his fucking foot, yo. I, I think he saw that Tyler, the creator performance, and he's like, "Oh, I gotta try I gotta to top step it." it up. Tyler but, is like with, ten years younger than him. And with Tyler, his he jumped out onto a bed. Yes. <laughs> oh, Tyler jumped on a bed. <laughs> yeah, like it was like a really soft landing, and there was a person right there next to him just in case he fell. Like yeah. he he did it the right way, so ta- oh, even so, being young. So, <laughs> so Kid Cudi thought he could just jump. Yeah, it like he nah. He broke his foot. That's yeah. a broke look foot. He's about to jump. Look at him. Look, everything about look at him. He, like he's about to God jump. is telling him, don't do it. He knows oh. he shouldn't do it. Oh. Oh. Something got hooked to his shoe or something. Where was he going? <laughs> oh, no. Nah, he's not even jumping in the thing with the people. There's still a separation. <laughs> like, ah. Now, play the hits, bro. Do his, the moaning and just get it on. Like, man, for uh, every young person in that audience <laughs> who looks at Kid Cudi as old, and washed. Yeah. Because you know there are some people. There's this key, you know, it's just, just the era we're in. There's some kids that regardless of all the things Cuddy has accomplished, they, they look at that he's Cuddy, old he's old and washed. And here he go, just proving their point. <gasps> That's a Oof. high stage. Bro. That's a six-foot stage. That's a crazy jump. You should never have done that jump. He need life alert. If he was home by himself, <laughs> he would need fucking life alert, yo. Straight up. What we got, Taylor? Go back. What, 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 yeah, let's play DC. My guy, the DC Young Fly. And who have BBL. So I'm constantly reminded. I'm constantly reminded, like, they made it. They go another big booty. She made it. See what I'm saying? I get why women wants to enhance their selves. I get it. But fellas, we have to do more on just continuously telling our women that they're beautiful. You're enough. We have to continuously tell them that they're gorgeous. Don't make your woman feel like she has to go do something, even if you fuck with another chick. Like, no, 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 no. You just love a woman. That's it. And women, listen to your man. Just listen. I'm not going to sit here and tell somebody don't do what they want to do, don't do what they No. People make decisions. You have to live with that as a unit. So I can't even sit here and say, well, I'm against nothing. Oh, I'm with it. As a unit, I took a loss. If you look at the women today. Mm. What do you think when you hear that, Schultz? Yeah, it's tragic, man. It's tragic when any anytime you lose someone you care about. It's definitely tragic when you're doing it for an elective surgery. You know, like if 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 you were doing a surgery to save your life and you knew that there was like a percentage chance that it wasn't going to work out, mm-hmm. it's still tragic, but... There's this part of you that goes, hey, we tried our best. We did everything we could. When it's something that maybe you didn't have to do, as it as it feels from watching him, they like he's like, I love you regardless. You don't need to do this. I think that becomes, maybe he's even feeling guilt. Like he's like, maybe I could have made her feel like, which is not I his hope he fault. don't feel like yeah, that. Yeah, don't, I hope he don't. Don't I feel like. He, I hope he's not beating himself But up. we go through all these things, I'm sure, just as people, when you lose someone you love, you're like, what could I have done differently? How could I have changed the situation? And it's not on him to do it, but but damn, bro. That, and the emotions he's feeling are valid because, you know, it don't matter whether it's a, you know, surgery or a gunshot or anything, if you have lost somebody to something tragic, you always but you think see other could, people, yeah, but yeah. you see other people who live through those things. You're like, why, why didn't mine live through Absolutely. You're going all, to always, 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 always think that. And then you start looking at it, you're like, wait a minute, 
this person I was with was so sweet. She was so caring. She was so loving. There's this other person over there that's a piece of shit that got a BBL. Why the fuck does she get to still live? I ain't even judging them on that. I ain't going I'm just saying, yeah. I think that's what you start to believe. That's when people, I think a lot of times they start to question God because they're like, yo, why would God have this person who's amazing die and this person who is a piece of yeah. shit live? Like, what, what is the message here? What is... Nothing wrong with asking questions too, man. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what course. people fail to realize. Like, you know, I don't know why people think you can't question God. God knows we're human. And God knows that, you know, yes, every now and then we're going to ask why. Yeah. You know, I may not, I may not stay in that why, but I'm going to ask. But but why? I don't think God is so insecure that we can't ask them why. Of I mean, course. the divine creator has a reason for whatever he does. Absolutely. So we should be asking and we should get an answer. And I think if somebody won't give you an answer, it's their insecurity. Even if they're like a high ranking religious figure, if they're like, well, you shouldn't be questioning God. It's like, well, I think you're just masquerading as somebody who pretends to know shit when you don't. That's if real. you look at thoughtful religious people, they have answers for stuff. That's real. And it's so much more refreshing when you talk to them and they start to break it down. Like, it's great. True. And sometimes the why isn't even the God. Sometimes the why is just questioning all of the circumstances surrounding the situation. You know what I mean? Of like, it's just whys. Why? Why did this happen? Why did this person go that way? Why did this person choose to do this? What happened with this? What happened? With that? Like, it's, it's you should ask questions. Yeah. If God didn't want us to ask questions, he'd have gave us all the answers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Facts. And there would be no surprises to nothing. Facts. So salute to the good brother DC Young Fly, man. I'm sending sending him healing energy, sending the family of Jackie O healing energy at all times. Let's pay some bills, Taylor. And let's come back and do some asking idiots. Yes, sir. All right, guys, let's take a break for a second. Because when navigating the city during rush hour, Vessies are my trusty companions, okay? Their waterproof technology and comfortable fit make every commute a breeze, especially on those rainy days with huge puddles around the city. It's that time of year, but Vessi has us covered, okay? They ensure dry and comfortable feet no matter the weather. Vessi has amazing shoes to keep you prepared for any climate. Definitely check out their Soho sneaker. It's a spring essential, sleek, waterproof sneaker. It is made with vegan leather and Dymatex knit material to help you navigate city puddles in style. You're not gonna be worried about them wet socks. You're not gonna be worried about changing out your sneakers. You're not gonna be worried about any of that stuff while you are at the office or you're chilling at work because you were protected with the Vessies. I'm telling you right now, the Dymatex technology is crazy. The Vessie shoes, it means you're always ready for unexpected weather shifts they got your back, okay? Choosing Vessi also means choosing sustainability. Their eco-friendly manufacturing aligns with the environmental values that are so uh, crucial to many of us. Everyday functionality is also huge. Vessis just aren't shoes, okay? They're a lifestyle enabler from work to play. They keep up with our busy schedules without missing a beat. And the removable insoles of my Vessis shoes allow personalized comfort. They adapt to my feet's knees, ensuring maximum comfort. So if you're like me and you want to be ready for anything, rain or shine, head to Vessi.com slash idiots. That is V-E-S-S-I.com slash idiots to get 15% off your entire purchase. Free shipping to Canada, the United States, Australia, Japan, Taiwan, Korea, and Singapore. Now let's get back to the show. Y'all would have never guessed any of those abbreviations. I killed that shit. It was California. Uh, it, is, it is when you're like in the state. But I think since it was all countries, yeah, it's probably Canada. Well, let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. Taylor gang. And it better not be one question about that goddamn Taylor made it song that Taylor thinks is named after her. Why can you not let me win? Damn. It's just not destined for you it's to win. So <laughs> Shut um, up. To have it. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Ah, uh, what's your great? Ooh. Carl.p underscore says, what's your greatest lie you've told and people believed? Oof. <laughs> Oof. There's so many for you, Charlotte. I don't lie, first of all. <laughs> That's a lie right there. Impossible question for me to ever answer because I've never told a lie in my life. I have a lie. <laughs> it was when I was so young. I was in, okay, so a friend of mine, <laughs> his dad was like a con artist, okay. but we didn't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would like live in these like fancy places or whatever. And uh, he once took us all out to uh, Six Flags in a limo, okay? And there was like some donuts and stuff in the limo. I think it was for like my friend's birthday party or whatever. 
came back to uh, the limo after being at Six Flags and uh, a couple of the donuts were eaten. And I go, uh, hey, I think the driver ate the donuts. Like kind of like telling on him, <laughs> right? <laughs> and the, the dad and I think like even the son were like, uh, what's wrong with that? Why can't the driver have a donut? Like this is a friend of ours. Like what, he's not allowed to have donuts. He's just there driving for us. We, we can't like, we treat him as a human being. And I looked them both straight in the face and I said, no, can we offer the driver a donut? <laughs> like he might be hungry. He's been sitting in a car all day. Mm -hmm. And then they go, they go, oh, you offer the driver a donut. And I was like, yeah, obviously. And that is in my life, the first lie I remember telling. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've been on a hot streak. <laughs> you lied because I lied because I felt insecure and I felt it like, um, <laughs> like, like uh, I don't know, like I was being uh, like I had bad character, and they they would think that I like had thought lesser of somebody. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Like I and I was just immediately compulsively was like, oh. No, 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 I'm not a bad person. I want you guys to think I'm a good person. But I, I like, I, it must have been like the first real lie in my life that I told because I distinctly remember it and we were probably in fucking kindergarten or first grade. <laughs> like I, I thought about this throughout my life. Yeah, yeah, For yeah, a yeah, portion yeah. of my life, I convinced myself that I actually said it. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I said the night the lie. There's a there's a phrase for that. I can't remember what it's called. Pathological lie. No, no, no. It's something <laughs> where you make you where you you've told a lie so much that, that you, you believe it's believe real. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I and I had to like remind myself like no 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 that was this thing mm. that you were embarrassed of and it. How crazy is that? Yeah. I know I'm making a bigger deal about this, but like it just kind of was profound mm. in, in, as like a kid. I was like, whoa. What's your greatest lie yeah. you told and people believed? Probably that I'm a earthling. I hate you. Next question. <laughs> Bro, I'm I hate you. Next, next part. I, I like, you know what? I, I had know, a real lie. I thought it was a werewolf. So, I did that. I, I've done that too, but I'm, I'm, I'm a shit. So that you shit could to... breathe underwater. I'm a merman too. I don't know what to tell y'all. Alex, what was your greatest lie? Um, <laughs> My planet, we do a lot of different things. So I've said this so much that I believe it, that I'm five, ten and a half. <laughs> I thought you were about to say that you straight. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you just five ten? Yeah, no, probably five nine and a half. Okay, why so, do you lie about the extra inch? I don't know. Pause. It just makes me feel better. Jesus Christ. Uh, w W says, "When did you figure out you were on the right path?" This is a great question. When did you figure out you were on the right path, Schultz? Um, I'm gonna be honest, bro. I think I can't remember a time where I, 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 yeah, I can't remember a time where I wasn't locked in. It was about different things, but I was maybe like when I lived in Spain, I like I did a year abroad in Spain and like I really enjoyed it, but I didn't do anything. I like worked at an adver advertising agency, but like an uh, internship kind of like, and I was like just smoking fucking weed and like just drinking. It was the most fun time of my life, but there was a part of me that was like, eh, you got to get after it. Like, mm -hmm. but after that, it was, I was pretty locked in. Like, this is what I want to do, or this is what I'm passionate about. I'm going to find a way to make a living at it and, you know, create authentically. And I've been really fortunate that, yeah. Yeah. Same. I'm not even going to sit here and tell y'all no lie. Like, I knew I was on the right path the moment I discovered this thing called radio. Yeah. Mm. In 1998, when I started as yeah. an intern, when I got on the air in 1999, I knew I was on the right path. Yeah. From that moment on. Yeah. Like, and, you know, through all the ups and downs, and it really, really was no downs. It's just life, right? So it's like, you know, you're working at one radio station, you get fired. You're working at another radio station, you get fired. Like, I've had four or five. Throughout that whole period, I figured out I was on the right path. Yeah. And you really realize how great of a path it is when you write a book. Yeah, and you really have to reflect you on really it. really reflect on yeah. it. And so, you know, I wrote a great book. And I used to always say that when that, when things would happen, I'm like, this is another chapter in the book. Hmm. This is another chapter in the book. Hmm. Another chapter in the book. That book became a New York Times bestseller called Black uh, Privilege. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And then it's just like, even times when even I was still on the right path, but I knew that I had to, you know, do things to stay focused, to like go to therapy, you know, like get my physical 
health in check, right? Like, like I when I when I started really, really, really leaning into mindfulness and like being a better person and like doing the work on myself, that too was me still being on the right path. Like nobody, this is the thing about paths. Just because it's the right path don't mean it's not going to be obstacles. Mm. Don't mean it's not going to be hurdles. Mm. Like there's going to be detours. Like, and if you have to, I call them divine detours. If you have to make that right or make that left or go over or wait a minute and tell the fucking deer across the road, whatever it is, you're still on the right path. Yeah. You know? So yeah. it's just like, yo, I've, I've, I've been on the right path since 1990, probably 1978 when I came out the womb because it's all part of the plan, right? I think it's like just the path, I don't know, for me, the path is to finding the passion. And you can have different passions yeah, and do those different yeah. things. But as long as you're you're doing the thing you're passionate about, I think you're on the right path. I mean, if you're passionate about drugs, I don't know if that's like the right path. but if, That might be your path, though. Yeah, you should be a drug addict. Like seriously, <laughs> yeah. we 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 act like that's like we don't know. If it, how do we know it's not somebody's destiny to be a crackhead? Because we all they that's say destiny is not a matter of chance; it's a matter of choice. That's true. So whatever choice you made is your destiny. If you chose to do it, yeah, that's your destiny. Yeah, that's a good. Point. So if you chose to go smoke some rock and you become addicted to crack. And you know, you stuck in dick for twenties for the, a good majority of your life. That's great that point. was the path. Great point. Now you either going. Get honest with yourself and clean yourself up. Yeah. Are you going to die lying? That's a good point. You know what I mean? Yeah. New book in stores, March 21st. May 21st, <laughs> actually. May 21st. Yeah, but yeah, when you, I like that question. When did you figure out you're on the right path? I've, yeah, I've been on the right path for a Never long got time. discouraged? No, it doesn't I mean you, you can't fired. get discouraged. But, but I'm, asking, I'm asking. Do you get you... discouraged in traffic? I'm asking you though. Like, I know, but I'm asking, do you get discouraged in traffic? In traffic? Yes. When you're driving and you're I trying get to get discouraged. somewhere, when you're trying to get somewhere and traffic comes, you don't, oh, fuck. Yeah. I can't wait till this traffic gets out the way. Like you're blowing the horn for no reason, you know? You're putting on your favorite music. You're doing things to help you get by. But you keep driving. While you're in traffic, but you keep fucking driving. Yeah. You keep driving. Yes, 100%. Um, thoughts on the rock selling shampoo hair products? <laughs> Ain't does? no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> I have to look it up. There's no way. <laughs> Depends what it's for. There's no way. No Ooh, uh, Rocky, I love you, dog. For, for people like Charlotte. Oh shit! I was right I about that thing. Yes, Enzoob six four five eight says Drew was right. Tokyo was Future's assistant, and Drake sent her a Chanel bag. Yeah, he does. I knew I was right about that bar. Mm. The bar was too pedestrian for Drake, especially in the beginning of a song. Like, that bar, like, uh, I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan, is like, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, if, if it's not double entendre, it's a bar from, like, a whack rapper in, like, a corny song. Mm. It has to be double entendre. Yeah, yeah. It was like the second bar of a song. Yeah. You don't put something there that doesn't have extra meaning that early because mm. it's an eye roll. Yeah. I knew it was, I knew there was heat there. Well, shout out to that goddamn waffle-colored warlock named Drake. <laughs> Ball Dwayne The Rock Johnson launches shampoo line. Your scalp, your scalp needs a little moisture. What's that? Oh, your yeah. scalp needs a little moisture. Let's answer one more, Taylor, because Schultz, you got to get up out of here. Make it a good one. With Charla, let's do this one. Hold on. With Charla, oh, two, let's do those last two, right? The, the AI one and the one before that. Would Charla ever open stand up for shows, even if it's just for one night? No. <laughs> no Q underscore Booker. I respect the stage, okay? You know how, first of all, you gotta be a psychopath to go out there in front of 20,000 people by yourself with the expectation to make these people laugh. Yep. I'm not that level of psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Like these guys, Schultz is a psychopath. Duval's a psychopath. You know what I'm saying? Justin Ladd, they're psychopath. Bill Burr, psych you're psychopath. Yeah, Kevin Hart sure. is a fucking psychopath. I'm gonna walk out on this stage in leather pants <laughs> and talk to this audience of 30,000 people and they're supposed to laugh at me, the audacity of you motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm gonna sit my ass down on that radio every morning, okay, and do what I do, all right? No, save that for the professionals. Uh, G. Keaton using AI to bring back comedians to do a set on today's current world. Great question, what do you think, Schultz? This AI just ain't there yet, man. This ain't there yet. I don't even know if it will get there. Comedy, I think it can get there for like, like the word problem jokes, like it could probably do that, but What's I don't know. What's a word problem joke? 
like a joke that um, it's like a clever misdirect, but it's really just kind of like a math problem. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you, got gotcha. you. Um, and I think that AI can probably learn the math problems. What it can't learn is like the emotional connection in a joke. Mm. There's certain jokes that are just like, you're just so emotionally connected to that moment or this story is just so awkward like and uncomfortable. And I don't know if AI can even learn that. Yeah. So, or maybe it can one day, but again, I think that will take a lot longer. I think AI is only going to trick people who want to believe anyway. Ooh, okay. Meaning, like, you can listen to a lot of AI stuff, and you can tell, like, all right, that sounds very robotic. That don't sound like when I heard push-ups for the first time. Immediately, my mind was like, oh, that guy, that's AI, just because of the way it got released. But then I, I'm listening. I'm like, nah, I can't be yeah, AI, yeah, y'all. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I really, my mom, like, I don't think this is AI. So you can hear it, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. um, I think AI is only going to really truly work on people who already want to believe something about someone. Yeah. If you already have a narrative about somebody in your mind, or if you already think somebody's saying some fucked up shit, or you want some confirmation that a person has said some fucked up shit, AI is going to get you every motherfucking time because you want it to get you. Yeah. And you're going to convince, you're going to tell other people, listen to this shit. No, that's him. That's him. And that person probably going to believe you just because of the way you're selling the shit. Yeah. Yeah. But if we all just used a little bit of discernment and sat back and listened, we know the difference between humans and robots, at least for now. For now. For now. I agree with you, 100%. Now, by October, I don't know. <laughs> by October, right before the election, I don't motherfucking oh, it's know. Get crazy. Oh, shout out to juror number five in the Trump trial. What do you do? She's a teacher. Oh. It's a woman. She's a black woman teacher from Harlem who told them uh, that she gets her, she doesn't listen to the news. She doesn't care for the news. She avoids political conversations. But when she does get her news, she gets it from TikTok and Google. And she said she also listens to inspirational podcasts in the Breakfast Club. That is that was news. Jesse Waters had it up, and Jesse Waters said Charlemagne listener. I don't know what that had. To, well, I do know what it has to do with now because when uh, Macari was explaining it to me, because he's a lawyer, but it's some type of I forgot what the fancy word for it is. But it's like well, they 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 ask you all of these different things, and I guess you got to. Mm -hmm. Tell them what type of media and stuff that you consume because they want to see if you can uh, if you can be objective. Right. Yeah. These things you consume will cause you to be biased in any way or could sway you uh, yeah. in any way. So salute to Jura number five. Like, and they felt like that wasn't enough to sway you. I get it. I, I mean, that's pretty cool that you that consuming you that you're objective enough where she could potentially be objective. Oh, yeah, but one fine. of the people on there literally says they get their news from True Social. And she made the jury. <laughs> Who gets to choose the jury? Is it the defense? Both. Uh, they yeah. both sides they, they, have they, to agree. Yeah. So, and then I think they, I think you get ten like uh, automatic. Like, if I say no to this person, they, they have to take them off. God. But then it. once you use up your ten, you can't then do it's it. And yeah. that's how you get a true social yeah. author. Got it. Oh, what an interesting process. Yeah. 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 All right. I think we did it, guys. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.